Hey, welcome to the Damn Music Show. We're going to do Decade Discussion. Uh, we got a request from Justin Hughes. Thank you, Justin, for uh, asking for another segment of this. Today, we're going to do what decade of music was had the most diverse music. I'm Darren. I say it's the 1980s, and this is... I'm Micah, and I'm going with the, the 20-teens. Yeah, the 20-teens. We decided <laughs> 20... to call it... 2010s, 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 2010s. Yeah. Um, so we're going to state our case and then defend our thesis, right? That's, a, that's how this that's, decade discussion is going to go. That's it. Good. Got to mention, man, we got a uh, live show coming up Tuesday, June 9th. Is that right? June 9th, yeah. June yeah, 9th, yeah, 630. We're going to do some weird, wacky stuff. Mess with us. Send us uh, comments. Make us uh, steer the ship. Uh, direct us where you may. Yeah, uh, so we'll it's going to be truly live. All right, so let's get into it, man. Why don't you start? You think the decade that we just completed had the most diverse music? Tell us why. Yeah, yeah, the the twenty teens, I guess. Didn't know how else to name it. Um, uh, for me, it always goes hand in hand uh, with a couple things. Uh, you have social and society, but most importantly, I think if you go back through history, uh, a lot of it uh, ends up being technology, uh, and just our access to technology has completely changed. So, uh, and I think as we talk about this, uh, there's obviously been a ton of diversity throughout it, but also just time we've gotten to now. So, uh, we have the ability to create music uh, much, uh, a, a lot more than we used to. It's accessible, it's easy, somebody without much money can do it. That's right. just never happened in history. So, yep. uh, I'm going to throw out a super easy example for me that we all know a lot love. I certainly love it. I think it's a great song. Uh, but it tees it up perfect, which is Old Town Road right. uh, by Lil Nas X. So here you have a song that's uh, created tons of controversy, right? Like, it, it's just been kind of madness. And it shouldn't have been. I don't know why it was controversial. It I mean, shouldn't Other have been. than he made Billy Ray Cyrus relevant again. I don't know uh, <laughs> right. why. Maybe that's the controversy part. I'm... Oh, my gosh. That's really funny. Billy Ray is just hanging on by a thread once yeah. again. Uh, well, the only reason he brought Billy Ray in is because the country charts wouldn't take him. So he right. blew up on the country charts. They kicked him off. Uh, and they said, this isn't country music, this isn't country, what defines country? So a great moment of diversity uh, and multiple genres hitting. Uh, here you have a black kid, African American, putting 808s over country music, which really isn't Yeah, but hasn't, hasn't there always been mashups and fusion? I mean, that's a, there's, you've always heard jazz, blues, fusion, or rock, blues, For fusion. Sure. So fusions For and mashups sure. are not anything new. But they are new because new fusion is always new fusion. So right. like throughout when before you had a mashup of jazz and blues that was not a new thing, and so by the twenty teens I feel like we have a lot more mashup. You also have a lot of people uh, that are from different backgrounds that are crossing platforms into other music because they grew up in it, but they don't have the same ideology, which I find fantastic. Like Valerie June or Trixie Mattel, who's basically uh, a trans cross-dressing country singer. Uh, which right. is, I think I think it's queer country, which is like, I mean. Tell me that's thing. not going to cause ruffles. Hey, pain. Randy Travis can have a uh, comeback maybe then with that. <laughs> trip. So, so, and also too, you think the 20 teens was helped, the diversity in the 20 teens was helped by the technology is that in home studios. But also I think what helps make that decade diverse is everybody has been able to find their tribe. When you look at mm -hmm. Spotify, when you look at YouTube. Yeah, I think that's a great Sirius point. Satellite, Pandora. Uh, you, there's an availability and access to information to look up. If you like, like we've talked about this before on Spotify, if you like bluegrass music that covers heavy metal, you can find that. And, <laughs> yeah, you're right. Like it's an exact niche too. Even, not just... and, and if 30 years ago, there was somebody taking, uh, bluegrass, uh, if they were taking heavy metal and making a bluegrass you, where could you find that? You couldn't go with the CD, at, you know, and I, buy I that. Agree. I agree, which is one of my things that I, right. that I advocate with the new setup and the new radio, which is iTunes radio, Spotify radio, and everything. But you're totally right, and that's hilarious. So yeah, you have. I think you have. You also have a lot more uh, diversity, and you have the, the the finances are actually going. There's articles on it that explain that the top one percent made like I think it was like 21, 23 percent less uh, in 2019, and it was paid out to the mid tier artists. Right. So because of the mid-tier, and the mid-tier is usually things like that. Like, it's a little more creative. It's a little more off the wall. It's not as mainstream. Well, you don't have uh, stupid marketing people telling them uh, they can and cannot do the, that. They, they're creating their people, own stuff. All those people now probably have contracts, and all the marketing right. people are probably telling them what to do. But, uh, yeah, Billie Eilish is a great example, too, because Billie Eilish is a really a new 
sound. It's not something we haven't heard, but it is. I mean, it's songwriting, yeah. message-based pop. I mean, Billy has something to say, and it was just her and her brother Phineas in right. the home studio in the back house. Like, of course, there were some other things at play there, but they're fantastic. And and for me, that was technology. But go ahead, uh, hit us with the 80s. Yeah, I think the teens argument is a good one. I think uh, the 80s, uh, for me, there was... Uh, they had a unique situation where they had a uh, overlap of the 70s going to the 80s and then the 80s going into the 90s. And in between there, there was just a total shift of different kinds of music. If you start off in the early, well, let, here's kind of genres that I, that I think of the 80s. So there was rock and there was subgenres of rock. There's traditional rocks like Journey, Brian Adams, Foreigner. There's the hair metal stuff with Crew, Poison, Def Leppard. Uh, there's hard rock like Van Halen, ACDC, mm -hmm. and Metallica. And I think those three types of rock and roll are different enough. Then you had... So country. maybe like to like the most diverse rock genre. It could, yeah, for, I think arguably. so. I, just, I don't remember in the 70s rock, there was rock and then there was uh, folk, it basically. definitely diversified rock and right. roll, for sure. And then country in the early 80s it was very George Strait, Reba McIntyre at the beginning part of the 80s. And then in late 80s, 89, that's when Garth Brooks and Clint Black put out their first album. And that ushered in a whole new era. They were like the, that led to the 90s with the whole hat act, mm -hmm. as they called it back there. Mm -hmm. um, rap really took off in the 80s and the early, the Curtis Blow and uh, Cool Modi, LO Cool J, uh, even DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince were in the 80s. <laughs> yeah. But then gangster rap came out of yeah. the late 80s. Yeah. Uh, NWA and Ice T's first albums were both in 1989. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it's just under the wire. But uh, punk hung, hang, hung in there with like a Black Flag and the Ramones. Mm -hmm. Then you had this whole top 40 major artists like Madonna, uh, Prince, mm -hmm. uh, who Jackson, else? Whitney Queen. Houston. Yeah. Right. Alt rock was yep. big. REM, the end yeah. of the world as we know it. It's apropos today, the Cure, the Smith. Yeah. Then there was, I think, the second wave of the British invasion with yeah. New Wave, Depeche Mode, Duran Duran, New Order, which was which was totally fresh at the time. Yeah, and was... then last but not least, we, we did. Uh, you know, we've talked about grunge in the '90s, how the '80s went to the '90s. Soundgarden's first album and Nirvana's first album were both 1989. <laughs> so think about the beginning of this. Uh, 80s, you had the Knack uh, and, and those folks in country, but rap, top 40 pop, Madonna, the, all those clothes, like crazy clothes that we like wore. Sneak in you did. That's you that's why it's you need because at the beginning, right there? Just, that's what I'm saying. It, based it's, on when it came out, it, I, I would like to submit evidence to the court <laughs> yes. that based on the arrival. <laughs> that's right. So yes, Nirvana. Uh, but it wasn't in, uh, in utero for sure. Technically <laughs> launched in 1989. So a lot. In, in, in high school cliques in the 80s, uh, oftentimes you were defined by the type of music that sure. you listen to. I think today, to. today, everybody Maybe it's still, still the same. Oh, I don't know. It's very much the same. I mean, I look at people like Little Eilishes now. Like, you got like a, a, whole, a whole generation coming up that are like Eilish or Swift. Right. Like, you know, <laughs> are you going Are you going to be punk, all do what you want, say what you are? Or are you going to be Taylor Swift and be like kind of right down the pike and break up with as many people as possible? Well, the good news is, is whatever you're into in today's world, uh, you can find it. You can find your tribe, I which do. is really important for everybody. I, yeah. So, I mean, I think you're justified to say that the 80s were extremely diverse and tons of new things. Showed. Right. I think with time comes along, you just have more time and more opportunity to make it even more diverse. Uh, but, you know, arguably here, here, wherever, they're very diverse moments in time. And the 80s brought around so much uh, change. And I will argue, and we'll go into this later, not argue, but I'll just state that, again, it was technology. Like that transition into the 80s right. was computers. It was audio to digital, so analog to digital. So when you shifted to digital recordings, it made so much things more accessible, possible, and completely changed the vibe and the sound. Yeah, and MTV so, made a big difference too. So, yeah. all right, so this segment's called Decade Discussions. We're going to be talking about the difference of uh, music decade to decade to decade. If you have a suggestion for us, let us know. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification Smash button. Subscribe. Yeah, I'm Darren. <laughs> and I'm Micah. This is a damn music show. Appreciate it.